and welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen video. I've really taken one for the Inquiring Minds team today. This is the Magon P138 Piston Filler. Magon slash Moonman has copied many pens from many brands. I like some of them. The Moonman M800, for example, is one of my favorite pens. They've copied Leonardo, Stipula, Lamy, Pilot, Aurora, and others many of which are well-built, nice pens. But in my opinion, they've struck out with copying Montblanc. With one exception, the, the Moonman P136 piston filler, that was a nice pen. But the Agatha Christie copy, the Little Prince copy, the Bohem copy, well, with the Bohem copy, the X1, I didn't even want to take one for the team for such a stupid pen. Even the Montblanc doesn't make sense to me. A retractable pen that has a cap? Enlighten me where I'm wrong, please, but stupid. This new Magon P138 piston filler is a close copy of the Mont Blanc Lorenzo de Medici from 1992, which was limited to 4,810 pieces. To be fair, only Lorenzo de Medici could afford the eponymously named pen. But when it comes to copying Mont Blanc, Magon slash Moonman seems to focus on models that aren't really pens in the first place. I mean, who could actually write with a Mont Blanc Le Barac? I know I couldn't. I sold my Moonman M1000 copy of that pen as it was only being used to prop my door open during the summertime. And this Magon LDM, I'm using an acronym here so I don't have to pronounce Lorenzo de Medici again in this video. This Magon LDM is another example of Chinese copying the style without regard to form or substance. At least I know what will prop open my door to the summer breezes very soon. So let's take a look at this doorstop right now. It's a pen in a box, and it looks like a Magon pen in a box. Let's see what Magon this is. They actually have very nice boxes now. This is the P138. There we go. I've been waiting for this one. We have the Magon Use and Care Guide in pictograms in Chinese and in English on the other side. Good for you guys. I have an extra nib and here we are. This is the P138 and I got this one. The other ones were sold out. Um, the other finishes. And I liked the antique look of this. It's metal and it's relatively heavy. It's got this vintage kind of clip, which looks very nice, but oh my God. <laughs> yeah, don't use it folks. And it looks like it screws to post, but it's got this really nice ornate pattern on it. How many facets do you have? Let me count the ways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that would make this an octagon oh no they might have to change their name again so it's got the non mont blanc snow cap on it and it looks like it's a screw to post but it's a nice feeling pen i like the black look actually and this looks like um ruthenium this isn't chrome this is ruthenium here one two okay now you're getting ridiculous three Three turns to uncap. Very nice. And this is a piston filler. And it's got a... Well, there you go. This must be the nib. Yes. So what happened here was I ordered this nib, which is a lemon nib. And it is a... What looks like a Naginata Togi style nib. They call it long knife, long blades, things like that. And uh, I think I bought this from Bobby. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Uh, but they've replaced the original nib with the nib that I asked for, and they give you the original nib as well. Yeah, there's the original Moonman fine nib in black. So that's the nib that comes on this pen, and when you get the extra, they put it on for you. That's nice little service there. Wonder if it unscrews from the barrel. Well, that looks like it's friction fit to me. Okay, and there's the piston. No visible means of removing that piston. Interesting. And we'll see whether we can get this piston out. 
So this is the P136 from Magon, and uh, I've I think I'm going to be using a black ink for this. What do you think? I'll show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons and measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Mostly what I don't like, I think. In the intro, I mentioned this was a copy of the Mont Blanc LDM. Here's a photo of the LDM. Note the differences and the similarities. Magon has copied the top finial and added their logo instead of the snowflake. The clips are almost identical. The facets have roughly the same patterns, but the end finial and piston knob are different. The Mont Blanc doesn't screw to post. In fact, I doubt it posts at all. If you have a Mont Blanc LDM, please send it to me for inspection. And where the Mont Blanc has the typical Mont Blanc barrel section, the Magon's section is slightly concave and tapered. This reminds me of an episode of Star Trek The Original Series. Season 1, episode 18, titled The Squire of Gothos, had an alien trying to copy Earth's culture, but missed by several hundred years due to time dilation. Trelane copied merely the forms of the 17th century, but none of the substance. You should taste his food. Straw would taste better than his meat. Water a hundred times better than his brandy. Nothing has any taste at all. That his food has no taste, his wine no flavor? No. It simply means that Trelane knows all of the earth forms, but none of the substance. This copy does the same thing. It may look similar to the original, but it's light years away from it. Overall, the pen is a regular size at roughly five and a half inches capped, but it's a hefty 46 grams. The cap and the barrel are octagonally shaped metal with patterns stamped into the metal. I'm guessing this is stamped aluminum over brass. The domed plastic top finial has the Moon Man logo in white and is reeded along the outside edge. Where the round edge meets the octagonal cap, the edges of this plastic are rather sharp. And the pattern cap is straight to the end. The patterns are a close match to the Mont Blanc without the ornate detail of the original. The clip is a direct copy of the Mont Blanc down to the two rivets on the very top. And I don't know about the Mont Blanc, but this clip is useless. You can't even make it budge. You should know that the arch adds strength. And below the clip, instead of Mont Blanc, it says Moon Man. The facets from the cap to the barrel line up if you actually screw the cap very, very tight. The barrel has the same patterns as the cap and the patterns line up every time, meaning they at least use single channel cap threads. At the end of the barrel, there are plastic threads that allow the cap to screw to post. There's a chrome ring that separates the threads from the black plastic piston knob, which tapers away to a domed end finial. The cap unscrews with a remarkable one, two, three and a quarter turns to reveal the black plastic concave section that has a small lip towards the number six size lemon long knife or long blade nib and black plastic feed. And here is the Moon Man number six nib that is original to this pen and was included by the vendor. Obviously the vendor is offering nib choices by removing the Moon Man nib and installing the nib of your choice for you. And it's nice of them to provide the nib that came with the pen as well. Let's look a little more closely at this nib. It has the lemon logo and manual grinding stamped into it. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly, but I nearly had to break the pen to get it out. There was some glue residue on the nib unit that looks like some form of shellac or glue. If you try to unscrew the unit using the nib and feed, you'll either snap the feed off or just pull out the nib and feed and leave the nib unit inside the section. That's what happened to me. There are two divots on the sides of the nib unit. There's one you can possibly see where, where are they? There's one right there and one at the bottom there. And that tells me that that nib unit is actually screwed in. I didn't have the tool that fits this span. So I took my Asvine wrench. I've got a number of these, so I didn't mind ruining this one. I took some pliers and squeezed those tines in so they actually fit into those divots to remove the unit. Here are some photos of the unit itself when it's been disassembled. There are two silicone o-rings on it. 
I slightly damaged the section right there by scratching that plastic with the wrench while I was using Herculean strength to get it out of there. And there was a nice cracking noise as it came out. So I thought, well, I've probably broken that. I think my legs might be broken, but I'll, I'll try to stand up. Oh! Yes, they are broken. The wound is beginning to smell a little like almonds, which is not good. I'll try the other leg. Oh! The section does not unscrew, so the only way to get at the piston for lubrication and maintenance is either by removing the nib unit or disassembling the piston. The piston was as much of a pain in the ass as the nib unit. It too was glued in place. My Asvine piston wrench fit that piston okay, but again, it took inordinate force to get it to budge. When I got it moving, there was a definite cracking sound, as I thought, again, I had broken the pen. But it was the glue seal. The piston is similar to the others Moon Man has been using, but because the cap posting threads are a collar that is part of the piston assembly right there, along with that ring, the ring and the threaded collar have been glued in place. I think this is to keep the facets lined up with the start of a single thread, so when it's posted, it isn't askew. Now when screw posting the cap, the facets do line up, but the clip does not. That might be because I removed the piston and that thread collar has shifted in position. I don't remember if the clip lined up when I first got it. I don't think it did. It doesn't matter in the least because when the pen is posted, it's hugely long and heavily back weighted. So you won't be wanting to do that. The inside of the cap shows a black plastic cap liner that is the entire interior of the cap, including the cap threads. I bought this pen from the Day Writing House store on Alibaba for $69.85 US. That vendor offers nib sizes EF and F in the Black Moon Man nib, medium and broad in silver. I have no idea what branding that might be a hand polished medium. I asked the vendor what this meant and got a completely incomprehensible response, so I gave up. The Prime Minister of Sweden visited Washington today and my tiny little nipples went to France. What did he just say? Check the prompter. And then three sizes of long knife nibs, which I assume are these black lemons. And the pen comes in two body styles, one like this one with the classic useless clip and that reeded top finial, and a more modern stylized top finial and teardrop shaped clip. The two styles come in two finishes each, the modern style in all black or silver barrel with a black cap and end knob, and the classic style in all black or all silver with black top and bottom finials. The silver versions were sold out before I could get one. If you don't want to watch to the end of this video, I'll cut to the chase for you. This pen isn't worth 70 bucks, folks, and I'll elaborate when I get to my likes and dislikes, mostly dislikes. Now for some size comparisons. Here is the Majon Moonman P138 piston filler with a Hongdian N10 piston filler, an Asvine P20 piston filler, a Pen BBS 495 piston filler, and a Hongdian N12 piston filler. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see how the P138 has the clip on the side when it's posted. It's a good length, but boy, that's a lot of weight on the back. The Hongdian N10 is a little long posted and it posts right on that piston knob. The Asvine P20 is actually not too bad. As a poster, the Pen BBS 495 doesn't really post, that's just sitting on there. It falls off really easily. And the Hongdian N12 Pelican M800 lookalike is actually the best poster of the group. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. The Hongdian N10 has a number 8 size steel nib. My Asvine P20 in Galaxy has a Kaigaloo long knife nib in it, calligraphy nib. And all the pens are a decent length when they're unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this uh, is 
is the Magon. I'm going to call it Magon Moon Man because it's got Moon Man labeling all over it. It is the P138 and it has a number six size steel long knife lemon nib. And again, the long knife is not original to this pen. Majon makes them with either EF or F Moonman steel nibs. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet. And the nib is smooth with feedback. Not even close to being scratchy. Good feedback. And the ink today is J. Urbain, or Jack Herbin, Stormy Gray. This ink was a gift from pen friend Janice, and is one of my favorite gray-black inks. It's a charcoal gray that has a gold shimmer to it. I couldn't get the fat pen into the narrow neck of the J. Urbain bottle. And that's what prompted me to work so hard to get that nib unit out so I could syringe some ink into the ink chamber. I know I could have just pulled the nib and feed, but getting the syringe into that small opening at the end of the nib unit is really tricky. As to line variation, well, that's the whole point of this nib. With no pressure at all, you're getting line variation because it behaves very much like an architect. They give you the thin vertical line and the thick horizontal line that an architect does, but it's more similar to a Naginata Togi nib that gets you different line variations depending on your pen elevation to the page as well. So lifting it straight up, you get some very thin... Oh, now it's spitting on me. Terrific. Uh, Brian, spit on me. Oh, that's nice. Now tell me I'm scum. How will that cool you off? What else are you going to do to me today? You can probably tell I'm not happy with this pen. Where was I? Oh yes, vertical lines like that. When your pen is vertical to the page, you get some very, very thin lines. As you decrease the angle, the line gets wider by a slight amount in the vertical direction. It's the same thing with horizontals. And it's going to spit again. It's best to avoid his level. So I got a feeling I might have damaged that nib unit, and there's air getting in there now because it's spitting like crazy. It'll drain some of the ink out of that nib. At least you can see the gold. There's the gold. Nice, huh? Looks very nice on my Kleenex. So, where was I again? Oh, yes, the horizontal direction. Vertically, thin lines. You decrease the angle and you get very low and you get some very fat lines. So the line variation that you get in this pen is in normal writing angle, the vertical is a 0 0.6 millimeter and the low angle horizontal line gets up to 1.1 millimeter in thickness which takes it from a western medium to a triple broad or a Japanese medium broad to off the chart on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing, well, it's very thin, but it's tearing up the page, so scratchy. You could polish that out if you wanted to flip it over to get a, a really nice, thin, sketchy kind of a line. If you're an artist, just a couple of turns on some 12,000 grit micro mesh. Well, yeah, I can probably get some of that scratch out of there. Yeah, that's even better just from those couple seconds. And for some quick writing. Well, that nib's very hungry for ink. The, the feed seems to be keeping up pretty well, and I'm getting some really nice shimmer 
out of some of that, out of some of those lines. You can see some of that gold shimmer. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there's so much to dislike about this pen that I'm going to have to use bullet form. The price, $70 US for a poorly made pen. Shame on you, Moon Man. The glued in section, the glued in piston, three and a quarter turns to uncap, the impossible clip, the back weighted screw to post, the screw to post clip position, the rough edges on the top finial, the overweight, and the price. Seriously, 70 bucks. If I say more, I'll just get more upset that I spent real money on this doorstop. Taking a more optimistic attitude would be to mention that you could buy 105 of these for the price of one Lorenzo de Medici. But my typical pessimistic side would have to add that 105 of these Mahjong doorstops would weigh 10 pounds and the shipping costs would be equivalent to a Mont Blanc. My verdict? And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, sneak peek unboxing videos, as well as early access to all my videos the moment I upload them. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. for watching and that's all she wrote I made this